I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Oh, right. I've also been thinking about getting one of my own clackers now yes, because that's a good they work so well it's super visual yeah it's super good for it would be super good for toy office but the thing i do is because i'm recording toy office uh on my phone simultaneously on the audio i just sync up the audio so they they're in parody i mean that's fair um also to be honest i lost my clacker which i just what? realized right now how did I, you lose your clacker i don't know how that ha- my cats were going nuts the other day my cats have been going nuts pretty much every like, day. So she chewed through my in ear monitors. She <laughs> oh, who, who did it? Several things. I had to re solder my uh, watch charger. Who who chewed through it? Mulder. She is pica. Oh, okay. Well, I I diagnosed her with pica. Yeah, I mean, usually if you're di- if you're the person diagnosing your animal with pica. Who knows? But I, <laughs> Jiro, Jiro has a bad habit of eating everything too. So, yeah, like when I first moved in, I had my um, the setup with the TV and my Xbox, yep, PlayStation, Nintendo, Roku, mm-hmm. and all that. She chewed through every HDMI cable, and she can sense if it's um. AC or DC because she will not chew through AC wires. And I spoke to the motor engineer at work and he was like, oh, they might be able to actually sense through their whiskers. Like if it's a kind of voltage that will hurt them. <laughs> it's the, the, the uh, she eats zero's. all the nice things. There's one room in the house that they can't go into uh, where you keep the, well, there's two. It's the garage and it's like, the the studio where I've got all my guitar stuff and our recording equipment and <laughs> she just yeah. goes ham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do a sync. Then. All right. Uh, three, two, one. Yeah, that should be good. That was a good sync. No, we nailed it. Um, I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> I've been having a weird week. There's that's fair. It's a week for weird weeks. I don't know, man. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so what's <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> a lot, I guess. A lot. All right. I don't even know. You see, here's the problem. I remember Sunday ish. Okay. And then I don't really remember my week. Oh, it's one of those weeks. Yeah. I, I kind of like, I, I had at work, I had to do this thing where I had to port port our software to a different architecture. Yeah. And that's awful. There, I believe it. It's absolutely awful and I hate it. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so that, that's, that's been my week. Okay. Um, I mean, on the plus side, my I had two of my orders that have been... Well, one of the orders was the order for the replacement of the thing that Jiro chewed through. Or not chewed yeah. through, knocked over and shattered. Um, and then the other one was my, my Big Bad Toy Store order, which has, like, my masterpiece Black Arachnia. Nice. So I'm kind of, kind of stoked for that, not going to lie. I'm, I'm legit excited for you for the masterpiece Black Arachnia. Like, she... I, I had a Black Arachnia. I had a Rat Trap. I had a... Uh, Optimus Primal, um, all Transmetal versions, and they mm. were so good. I need to actually get new missiles for my Optimus, my my Optimus Primal Transmetal because I found out yeah. that they're broken. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I think they got broken like just during moving and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, I still think the best Transmetal though, Cheetor aside. Okay. Um, because Cheetor has a remold that makes him really freaking good. It's yeah. a Metals Jaguar. Really, really fun toy. Um, 
also like a hundred dollars, a hundred twenty dollars now. Fuck. All right. And he's a deluxe class. Um, yeah. The the thing I really like is Beast Beast Wars Transmetal Megatron. Oh, did I? I did. I had. Yes, he like here's the purple metallic. I had one yeah. of those. Yes. Well, so the unfortunate thing is he suffers from really really fragile plastic. <laughs> he does. So um, I, I don't think I ever told. So like every Easter, we mm-hmm. used to go to my grandparents' house, and our Easter baskets would have each year a Transmetal Beast Wars uh, figure, and I mm-hmm. did have the uh, I got Rat Trap. And Megatron through that, and I think my Optimus Primal was a birthday present, maybe, if I recall that, correctly. That yeah. Optimus Primal was really good. They were by so the way. good. Um, yeah, it, it's actually kind of heartbreaking, though, because you don't see... So, if you get the, the Japanese medals version yeah. of Megatron, um, that one doesn't suffer from the gold plastic syndrome. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, there's a tampograph on uh, Transmetal Transformers that says yeah. their name, and for whatever reason in Japan they didn't say their name. They said Destron or Cybertron. Oh, okay. Um, and they're also a slightly different color too. Like yeah. the the, the purple. So the American one's like a a deep purple. Yeah. Whereas the Japanese one's like a pinkish purple. Okay. I have both. Um, because, <laughs> because my, of course, because of course, that's the answer. Yeah, it's of my, course. My first one, the shoulder snapped off of it when I first got it. When, well, no, when I started to take out my transformers again, after the time period that they had been in storage, I was trying to transform him and I forced it a little too hard and it snapped right off. Yeah. Um, because it turns out the shoulder also breaks all the time oh, on those things. No. Dude. <laughs> the um uh gold plastic syndrome sucks, but I was yeah. thinking about this before. Um Transformers, like as a hobby, is a really like sneaky hobby. Because almost everyone I've ever met who's interested in Transformers and like collects Transformers, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh they they play with them when they were a kid. They grew up, they left them alone for a while, and then either in high school or college, they got back into them hard. That is almost always what happens with Transformers yeah. fans. It's not like it's not like a thing that somebody is in love with them always. It's like they have a period of time, like a cooling off period, mm-hmm. and then it's done. It's over. <laughs> and the worst part is you don't know who's going to get affected by it mm-hmm. at all. Cause it's like, <laughs> it's like getting getting a disease, <laughs> like you know, like one of those incurable yeah. diseases that just goes into to hibernation for yeah. a while. That's literally what it's like. Because <laughs> what hap- what my trigger was was when I saw the 2007 Transformers movie trailer where yeah. they're on Mars, and I think it was Blackout. I want to say grabs the Mars rover, and it's like a whole thing. Um, when I saw that trailer, I was like, oh, cool. Well, I guess I'm now going to dig out all my old Beast Wars. Oh, BotCon's a thing? All right, let's just buy a bunch of Beast Wars I didn't have before. And yeah. then I've been going, I went to almost every BotCon since. <laughs> I only missed three. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> I like your, well, no, you know this. I see it a lot. I like your taco tank. I do love my taco tank. I, you know what the worst part is? I want to take it out, like, really bad. You can. I can, but... No one will stop same, you. At the same time... Who are you going to resell it to? No Who? one. That, that's yeah. the point. Yeah. I'm not going to... I'm never going to resell it. I'm never going to get rid of it. But I just kind of love the fact that it's in the box. Yeah. Because there's something just gorgeous about it. It's like a... It's beautiful. <laughs> it's like a, a, a forbidden uh, tree. I, that yeah. and my my God Neptune are both sealed mitten seal box. Yeah, but I just I like the way that they look in the box. I don't. They're know. good. I'm usually the kind of person who takes his toys out as soon as he gets them. Yeah, but those two are like the exception to the rule, and I don't know why. <laughs> I just find them to be beautiful. I'm looking at them right now, and it's like bringing a tear to my eye. 
<laughs> um, I also found out something horrifying. Oh, I'm excited. Yes, continue. So, I was curious, and I was looking into... So, for those of you who don't know, BotCon was a Transformers convention that's defunct now. It's been replaced by HasCon, which is only like every two years or something like that. To, uh, there's a part of me that would love to work for Hasbro at some point in my life, so I'm not going to shit talk it. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> um, yeah. So BotCon did this thing where every year they would have a souvenir set. Mm -hmm. And 2006 was called Dawns of Futures Past. Okay? Or Dawn of Futures Past, that's it. Um, and in that, they did the entire crew of the Axelon as though they were pre-Beast. So, like, in their cybernet Cybertron forms. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Optimus Primal was a repaint of Cybertron Crumple Zone. Rat Trap was a repaint of Ransack. Um, oh, geez. The Cheetor was a repaint of Clocker. I don't remember what uh, Rhinox was a repaint of, but it was kind of like a... Um, like a tractor or something like that. Yeah. Regardless. So the the original box set came with Cheetor, Optimus Primal, Dinobot, Rat Trap, and Rhinox. And then they had two souvenir sets that came along that you could buy also. Uh, one of them was Laserbeak and Buzzsaw, which was a repaint of the Energon um, bird folks. Yeah. And the other one was Darkseid Megatron and Waspinate. So, the story behind those two is there were only 500 ever made of them. Ever. Okay. Yeah. Like, ever, ever. Um, in terms of, like, rarity, the, the closest thing that I can find to the 500 ever made, I think, is Primal Prime, which I think mm -hmm. got 1,500, if my memory is correct. Um, it got terrible distribution. Uh, <laughs> anywho, there's only 500 of this Dark Side Megatron in existence, and Megatron, Beast Megatron, is a ludicrously popular character. Yes. So is Waspinator, for that matter. But uh, I had a Waspinator. He was so fun. Okay, continue. Waspinator is pretty great. He was so um, good. So there is a there is a very limited number of these. One year at BotCon, they were having a casino night, and my dad and I pool our winnings together. All right. Mm -hmm. And we ended up having the most money out of anyone at the casino night. <laughs> yes. So I I wanted they had a laser beak and a buzzsaw and I wanted them, yeah. but I held out because the last thing that they did was Dark Side Megatron and Waspinator. It what ended up happening was a bidding war between me and another person. And basically what ended up happening was the person who's running the auction was like, all right, how many, how much money do you have? And how much money do you have? Yeah. And I, we won because we had pooled our stuff <laughs> and they were like, all right, I guess you just win it. So now I have, I have a beat, a dark side Megatron from a con that I never went to. Uh, and it's like limited to like one in 500 or something like that. It's a yeah. mythic level, uh, bot con souvenir. That's great. So, when I got it, it was worth $1,500. Yes. <laughs> I was looking on eBay because I was curious because I kind of wanted a Axelon Primal. Mm -hmm. So I was looking on eBay, and lo and behold, uh, I found a Dark Side Megatron. Oh, okay. So let me pull this up real quick uh, because I, I feel like it would be more impactful if I send you a link to it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I know what that laugh means. Um, so I had been operating under the, oh, it's sold out. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I had been operating under the assumption that it was $1,500 for these past, like this past decade or so. Yeah. Oh, okay, maybe I maybe I am incorrect. It's still about fifteen hundred dollars. I saw one going for three thousand dollars. Is what we're gonna, gonna say. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still about fifteen hundred, but still for something I paid literally nothing for. 
Yes. <laughs> it's also like the taco tank is a big part of like a like a crown jewel of my cr- collection. Like yeah. I love it. But this dark side Megatron is literally like the item of my collection. Yeah. That and my blue eyes Shidor. Those are the two mm. things that if if someone put a gun to my head and said I can only save two things, those would be the two things I pick. <laughs> Jiro, you are out. No, I mean in my collection. Okay. <laughs> Although now you're making me you're making me make choices and I, I don't know if I'm ready to deal with the consequences. <laughs> choices you are not ready to make. <laughs> yeah. I really not. Like at yeah. that point you might as well just shoot me. It's probably easier. <laughs> there uh <laughs> So the last time we spoke, uh we yes. recorded uh a week early. Um yep. because oh God, was a- that's that's why it felt like it's been so long. I was wondering. Forever. That's what yeah, it felt like I... forever. Yeah, no, it was Erica's birthday, and then we, we mm-hmm. were going to stay the night. She wanted to do um, escape rooms and virtual reality rides, which is okay. great. We uh, we went, got a nice dinner. We just, like, got a couple beers, and uh, which, we're just... Let me, let me stop you. Yeah. You, where did you eat dinner? I know where you went. Yard house. Because you told me. We, we, yard we house? To, okay. Yeah, we went yard house. Okay. And we just were like, had we each had one beer, and we're just mm-hmm. sipping and talking. And then at some point, the head chef came out, mm-hmm. and like put his hands together and apologized. And we're like, what? What? I don't understand. What is this? It took like ten minutes longer than he thought it would for our food to come out. So he put all the drinks and all the dinner on the house and free dessert. And we were like. You, we were like, what are you doing? You don't have to. We tipped like we paid for everything. What? But it was a full free, like, everything. What? Yeah. And then we went to, uh, we did did a uh, an escape room, and it was like a high uh-huh. fantasy. Like, you're in a dungeon, and you got to, like, solve stuff, break out of the cell, crawling through things. It, it was, like, Skyrim-type yeah. um, puzzles mm-hmm. to solve. So we yeah, did yeah. all that, and then at the end, all the lights go out. And then they come back on and, like, something breaks open and a dragon head the size of, like, the front half of my car comes out and just roars and breathes smoke. That was, was great. This at, was this at Five Wits? Yeah, it was Five Wits. Okay, okay. And uh, also, if you go to Five Wits, do that one. It's on the far left. It's great. <laughs> um, then we did some uh, VR rides and so Like, that was uh-huh. fun. We went back to the hotel. It was, there's a, a Hilton, like, five minutes away. Yeah. Went to the restaurant slash bar that they had, and we're just hanging out with the bartender, and uh, just uh, we're just like hanging out and being cool. Had a couple drinks, and then we had some bottles sent up to the room, and went up, and then we called back down because we we're like, "Well, we should probably get another bottle." And he was like, "I was trying to figure out what room you guys are in." They sent up on the house another person with um a a, a tray and like ice and these glasses. He, they sent up the like the whiskey that we like on the house, and that was cool, which leads me to this last Mr. Bean moment, where okay. uh, it was a it was a suite. There was uh, like several different rooms, and there was a hot tub area, yeah. and there was uh, bubbles involved, and uh, on the side they said like press gently. So I was like, all right, boop, press gently. Got that oh, going. No added some bubbles and then at some point we were like let's maybe kill like turn this down a little bit and then at some point we were like oh god it won't turn off there's too many bubbles or it's just us <laughs> Care, like carrying arm f- <laughs> armfuls of bubbles just like get like pushing it back to the middle carrying it to the toilet <laughs> like, like a fucking we like, like a fucking i love lucy yeah, moment exactly like, we're like it won't stop we can't turn it off like just start putting the bubbles the middle, in your mouth carry them to all that we're like, and I'm like it won't turn off it won't turn off <laughs> like, it was like it was it was hilarious it's like at one like as half of you was like this is a problem the other half is like this is perfect this is that's, the funniest thing that could happen in the moment. And then that we is had, honestly we had, very funny. It was so <laughs> it was <laughs> just, 
Just, again, armfuls. Armfuls, I'll just, like, throw them back to the middle. Like, keep it, like, don't fuck up the room. Like, keep it all. <laughs> like, well, you want to, you want to, you don't want to pay, uh, get your, you want to get your security deposit back, man. Yeah, ex that's all it was. It's just, like, let's just get our deposit back. Like, just shove it to the middle. Throw it in the toilet. Who cares? Like, get, and then at some point, we're like, all right, we have to call somebody. <laughs> so we called. <laughs> this is, again, after, like, they sent someone up with, like, a silver tray full of ice and, like, whiskey and shit standing up on the house. Like, <laughs> we shouldn't have, we should have never given him that whiskey. It was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably it. So we, I we, bet you, I guarantee, I guarantee at least one person down <laughs> in, at the front desk was like, why did we give them oh, yeah. whiskey? Okay, like, they sent us, like, we were just hanging out, and we were, we were just, like, they sent this because we were just cool and normal. Um, like, we're, like, we're, go we're, like, we're going Threw back them to the wrong. room, we're going to want food later. So we got food to go, and then they uh -huh. gave us um, real plates, real, this isn't normal, like, you, they usually put it in, like, a styrofoam thing. We got, like, real yeah. plates, real silverware, real, like, condiments and all that. Like just sent up to the room whoa, on the house. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you talking like a glass? Yeah, everything Heinz like bottle? glass and silver. Like that. Jeez. And that's See, just I, because we I were get... cool. And then we go back up, and then they send the guy up with the platter of whiskey. And I mean, that was probably the mistake. And then um, that was probably the mistake. That was the moment. Yeah. And then like the bubble incident happens, and we're like, we have to call somebody. So we call down, and we're like, so here's what's happening right now. You should be aware we need a sit and then they said and then a manager comes and he's got like a full suit, button up vest, dressed super nice. <laughs> and, then he's in, and then he's also trying to figure out it's one of those things where like the button just isn't working correctly. Like the button just wasn't working correctly. like it's not on us. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep telling yourself that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then this guy that's dressed super like super like it's all these super fancy people coming up and then we're just like we just want to drink and, and, and get rid of all this Do like you... crazy i love lucy mr bean amount of bubble like we're just like we just want the bubbles to stop <laughs> i i get so nervous when people who are dressed in nice clothes come in come anywhere near my my like sphere yeah. of influence <laughs> that for me that would have been literally my personal hell that's why it was so funny though right it's okay it's recognizing okay this is my personal hell and then stepping back and going if i was an outside uh, observer this would be the funniest shit to ever happen honestly and this making the conscious decision to live in that second part where you're like this is actually really funny <laughs> It's really fucking funny, yeah. Brandon. It's really good. Yeah. I'm just imagining both of your reactions to the situation. Oh, yeah. It was great. And I, I kind of have, like, a view of how the two of you would react independently. And it's great. <laughs> it's it's perfect. It was the best thing that could have happened, right? We had, like, nice, fancy dinner on the house. VR, all the, all, VR rides, escape rooms, using gift cards. Everything's free. Go back to the hotel, go to the attached restaurant, like, drink and eat there. All that's free, and they send stuff up to the room in platters. And then go back to the room, and it's, like, this nice, fancy room, and then just, like, too many bubbles. <laughs> too many bubbles. Yeah, it was perfect. Just all the bubbles. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's... That's really good. My yeah. only, the only story I have from a hotel is the time that I got ripped off by a uh, taxi cab driver in Victoria <laughs> Island. So, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. My the the person the front desk manager of the hotel was like, "He's ripping you off," and I'm like, "Yeah, I kind of guessed that much. I just don't have the I don't have the emotional." ability to handle yeah. confronting someone who's ripping me off. 
and who just drove me from an air from from a, a ferry station to a hotel in a different country on the other yeah. side of the <laughs> the continent. I just don't have the ability to handle that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, anywho. I guess we should probably start this week's episode. Yeah, we should probably get around to that at some point. <laughs> I, I I don't care. It was a good that was a funny story. Yeah. <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> that was really worth it. Um Okay. So this week's episode. Yes. It was first cited in wait, nineteen wait. Who are we and what do we talk about? Oh, <laughs> okay i guess we're cryptopedia my name's john my name's brandon and we do cryptids sort of yeah, i think close enough yeah most no, of the time most yeah. of the time it's cryptids cryptids are like creatures that you don't know what they really are and usually it's just a drunk guy in the woods <laughs> that's not wrong yeah i mean let's be real I think about half of the stories we've covered on this podcast can literally, one of the possible explanations could be it was a drunk guy in the woods. Yeah. At least. At half. least half. Yeah. 50% at least. half. Yeah. Cause this is what, what, what episode is this? Like 60. 60. It's 60. Is it 60 even? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're 60 in. That's a horrifying thought to me, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I have not gotten much sleep this week because of the cats. <laughs> um, so we're taking. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm literally losing it. Uh, the first sighting of this creature was in 1978. Okay, its taxonomy is roughly chupa thingy, chupa and it's thing. from. Cabbage Town, Toronto, Canada. Uh, right. I know you clicked into it, but I had the feeling you would never in a million years be able to guess what this is. So this is my guess, and given your description so far, I'm thinking it's wrong. It's incorrect. Uh -huh. But I saw you made a post on Twitter uh -huh. about Alien Big Cats 2. So my guess is that it's a form of Alien Big Cat. Incorrect. Incorrect. Okay, I figured you wouldn't post that and then just give shit away, but it's like, oh, did I just catch him? Did so I catch this him? week, this week we're going to be covering the Toronto Tunnel Monster. The Toronto now, Tunnel Monster. Okay. I want to put a preface at the front of this. Is it uh, an alligator? No. Okay. It's a very. Sh the actual story for this epi week's episode is very short. Yeah. Most of this week's episode is the stuff surrounding the story. And okay. some of the weird shit that's in Toronto in general. Yeah. Um, so, it's a really short story. This might be a shorter one, but we also just did a, an hour and 30 minute uh, feature length episode, so who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, Cabbage Town, Toronto, Canada. If you think that it's named that way for a racist reason, you are probably correct. <laughs> <laughs> Originally known as the Village of Don Vale, Cabbage Town is a neighborhood in central Toronto. In the late 1840s, its name was derived from the Macedonian and Irish immigrants who were said to be so poor they grew cabbages in their front yard. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. All right. I so maybe it. not racist, but maybe uh, maybe classist. It's at the very least. There's a definite ist it, about there's it. An ist, there's an ist somewhere in there. There's yeah. no doubt about it. So apparently the neighborhood was infamous for being one of Toronto's largest slums for most of the 20th century because of said cabbage farming. Okay. Um, I like me some cabbage. I I could take or leave cabbage even though I'm Irish. Which, yeah. you know, because I'm I'm part Irish, by law, I think I had to make a note of the fact that I'm part Irish. <sighs> by law. But actually, in my case, at the very least... Uh, I'm about quarter Irish, and my grandfather's parents were in the Irish Mafia. So, I get a pass. No. No, you yes. don't. I Listen, do. Listen, all right. I, here's why I get a pass. Because my grandfather's mother got beheaded. Okay, you get a pass. By another... <laughs> you get a pass. <laughs> by, by the, like, another, like, competing family in the Irish Mafia. So, deal with that. I was about to make an argument about... Um, 
Cole Cannon, the uh, corned beef and cabbage version of a spring roll at our uh, at the Mountain House, or not the, at, at the whatever where fucking people go to eat St. Patty's Day, but the yeah. beheading uh, tops that. I think it does. I it think it does. does. I will say this. I love corned beef and cabbage. I just don't like eating the cabbage. I like the flavor it imparts to the corned beef. Okay. That's I think fair. that's fair. I that's think that's fair. fair. I like vinegar on all that shit. The Dude, sp- squirt bottles full of vinegar? Yes. I actually love vinegar, and I it's don't know so what's good. wrong with me. It's because you're so white. I think that's right. <laughs> I think you're right. Honestly, I really do. Oh, what was it? There was something I had recently. It tasted vinegary, and I loved. It. Oh, we went to um, we went to like the fancy mall in White Plains. Yeah, uh, because Lissa wanted to go to a Newberry Comics uh-huh. to look for some like resin kits. Yeah, or not resin kits, like like little resin. Um, no vinyl, vinyl blind boxes. Regardless. Oh, okay. So. They had a P.F. Chang's, and we went there because it was the only one that had an yeah. outward-facing restaurant. Uh-huh. Um, so we went there, and we got this, like, honey chicken because it's, like, a family-style restaurant. Yeah. Delicious. And it had this, like, distinct vinegary aftertaste, and I love yes. it. It's so good. I, I'm i not going to lie. I wasn't expecting P.F. Chang's to be as good as it was. I <laughs> am excited because I've never gone to a P.F. Chang's and just learned where one was. It's in so, White Plains. I know where I'm going sometime in the near future. <laughs> the mall itself is kind of eh. There's a really cool Newberry Comics there, which is like vinyl, comic books, yeah. n- general nerd junk. Um, they have a spider. They have some alien toys there, which is pretty cool. I thought about buying them, but I'm kind of into the whole uh, three and three quarter inch scale lately. And I don't really want to buy, unless it's a transformer. I don't really like buying super articulated toys anymore. Yeah. Um, but that's beside the point. Regardless, it's pretty cool. Uh, you do have to pay to park there. And uh... I have hit my tire. I've hit my tire literally every single time that I've gone into that, that place. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, regardless. So slums for most of the 20th century, but, in the 70s, the neighborhood was gentrified, much like Kingston's being gentrified today. <laughs> um, did you know that? Did you know that Fye and Hot Topic are leaving the Hudson Valley Mall and H and M and and H and M? Yep, and H and M and uh, a few other stores. I hear that GameStop is going out of business soon too. Yep, like GameStop too nationwide. Um. The shoe store is... They seem like they're staying. Target, yeah. Best Buy, Dick's are the anchors. They're staying. But yeah, well, Target... And then tar- Victoria's Secret's been having a lot more sales than I think that they probably, usually have. That means they're probably going away. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's my concern, is uh, that they're leaving. I, well, the problem is the people who took over the mall don't know how to run a mall, but that's... Yeah, I mean, that's true. I just want it to shut down and turn to a giant paintball arena, but still have dicks and Target. Oh, my God. If they had a giant paintball arena, I'd definitely go. Yeah, because it'd be so great. It'd be so great. I'd get so much more exercise if that was a giant paintball arena. (laughs) And it's like a 20-minute drive for me to get to Kingston. I'd still do it. Like, I mean, at the very least, I'd do it every Friday because I have to be in Kingston, like, every Friday, so. Yeah. Um... (laughs) This is nothing to do with the story, but I uh, a funny story though. When I went to the because I was in the hot topic because I yeah. saw it was closing, and I'm like, eh, I wonder if they've got anything like that has been sitting in the back room forever and is like total junk, but they're selling for like three bucks. Um, and I ran into the guy that we knew from there, whose name I can't remember. Yeah, ditto. And it was just like, hey, dude, you're the place you've been managing for like a decade is uh, going out of business. Sorry about that. Bye. Yeah, I gave I gave him an up nod the other day. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, that being said, Fye went out of business. Honest, I gotta tell you, because I was looking for like cheap DVDs because I was like, yeah. I've been wanting to watch the Alien movies lately. Mm-hmm. And I was looking for the Alien movies on DVD, and I'm like, oh, if they're having, if they're going out of business, maybe I can get it for like five bucks, like the first Alien. Right, I can just give those to you. I have them now. Okay, <laughs> I, I own them now. Um, okay. <laughs> so 
I was looking at it. It was like 30 bucks still with a like 50% discount. And I'm just like, who would buy this? Why would you buy anything from this store if its price is always this high? So it came by. It's going out of business on this. This is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Um, I did watch Pr- Prometheus last night, and that is a good movie. It is a very good movie. I was not expecting how good that movie was going to be, but... I just saw... Um, we saw the trailer together, um, I think, before Godzilla. Um, I think it's called Annihilation. It's got Natalie Portman. And, I like, tried... The animals mutate. Yeah. I tried to watch that. I couldn't get through it. Oh, I loved it. It. I mean, it has some real... Like, like what was it? The bear with the human voice or whatever? Yes. Yeah. I, I've seen all the cool bits from it, but for whatever reason, I just couldn't get through it. I don't okay. know, it was weird. I don't know, yeah. it just, it, it happens. Um, I will say, though, I hadn't seen Alien or Aliens ever. No. Yeah. You fucked uh, up. Alien is great. But Alien the chap, is great. The, the chap is so hilarious nowadays, he did not yeah. age well in no. terms of, like, being spooky. Yeah. Aliens is legitimately terrifying still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are great. I just yeah. saw... Um, the new Predator on uh, HBO, and that was so good. Oh, I, um, I haven't seen that one yet. It's good. Watch it. Um, because it, it it's so funny, but it's also good. It's a sci-fi horror movie. Um, I worked with the uh, Boyd, the uh, like <laughs> the, the the lead actor in that movie. I did a thing beside and now he's the star of the new predator movie and i talk about weird animals and uh so i guess we all know who came out on top yeah i think so too yeah (laughs) i think so too yeah um so let me get back to the story because i got really distracted by gentrification Uh um in the 70s the neighborhood was gentrified by rich people restoring the old victorian houses which lined it and it's actually like it now has this like tagline like Oh, the most uh, classic Victorian houses in a row. Blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah, blah. one of those, one of those stupid like marketing things that really uh, only wealthy people care about at all. Yeah, because like quite frankly, I literally don't understand the appeal of a Victorian era house personally, yeah. like a Victorian style. Um, I don't know. I know some people like it, but for me, it's like, I, what do you mean? I have to have a radiator. I have a radiator. I don't want one. <laughs> I don't want a radiator. So my laundry room's like the, the all right, here's the upside of a big radiator. Yeah. Only in the winter time mm-hmm. before you and after you go out to shovel, you put your boots and your coat over the radiator. I'll give you I'll give you that. I'll and give you that. And then booyah, got some nice hot shit coming out. But still, I will say I don't like the fact that uh, Victorian era houses have like literally zero insulation. Uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless. Uh, so nowadays the neighborhood is strictly affluent, um, yeah. with home prices hovering in the millions. I looked at it oh. cause I was curious. Uh, it's a far cry from the slums, although I hear Toronto in general is crazy expensive. So I don't yeah. even know if that's like the most expensive neighborhood in Toronto right now. Yeah. Cause like I was doing research, um, on like home prices in Toronto because I was curious mm-hmm. after like doing this episode. And I guess their suburbs are only 12% cheaper than living in downtown. Yeah. Which is really bad because like in New York City, the suburbs are 50% cheaper than living in downtown. No shit. Yeah. I'd rather live in the suburbs too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I hate living in cities, but that's yeah. a whole other thing. Um, Anyways, it is against this milieu of gentrification. I can't believe I wrote that that milieu set of words. Yeah, that uh, this week's cryptid made its appearance in the crowded metropolis because it was a crowded metropolis in 1978. Yeah. So, um, August 1978, a re- resident of Cabbage Town, Ernest, was searching for a kitten in a small cave near his apartment. I get it. I'd probably be searching for a kitten too. Yeah, yeah. I guess he was taking care of a, like a litter and it got lost somehow. Um, so I'm going to nip the question in the bud here. Yes, there are tunnels and caves in Toronto, 
we're going to talk about that more later because um turns out Toronto is built on top of like rivers. Oh, that's cool though. Yeah, yeah. Uh because it's all like draining into Lake Ontario all that stuff. So 10 minute 10 feet into what I can only describe as claustrophobia giving physical form, which is the image you've got right there. There's, oh no! That yeah. is that is claustrophobia. Uh, the avatar of claustrophobia, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Ernest encountered something. Uh, it was pitch black in there. I saw it with my flashlights. The eyes were orange and red, slanted. It was long and thin, almost like a monkey. Three feet long, large teeth, weighing maybe thirty pounds, with slate gray fur. Now, so far pretty bog standard sighting i mean it's not really yeah. even all that different from like the dover demon mm-hmm. like it's actually really close to the dover demon yeah. in terms of description um less of a hydros uh hydrosocialic head and all that stuff but whatever um however there's a slight wrinkle in Ernest's account as to what the creature did i'll never forget it it said go away go away in a hissing voice then it took off down a long tunnel off to the side I got out of there as fast as I could. I was shaking with fear. It was clearly masturbating. Probably. If it can talk, it's like, go, go, just go away, go. That it's, it's, he caught it. He caught the monster. He caught it. He caught it. Yeah. That's why its eyes were glowing orange. Yeah. That's normal. That's, I mean, mine do. I know, right? Yeah. (laughs) Ernest refused to reveal his last name to prank calls, which... All I can say is fair because yeah. he was in the phone book. Like, I can get that. Uh-huh. But at the same time, it makes it impossible to verify anything. Mm-hmm. So, whatever. Uh, the reporter went with Ernest to the site of the sighting. That's a fun set of words you wrote, John. However, the tunnel entrance had collapsed partially over the winter. Ernest believed the tunnel to connect to the sewer and that the creature had been using it as an entrance. He even reported sounds of animals in pain coming from the tunnel entrance. Uh, the article mentions, like, a half-buried cat as well, as if to say, like, the creature was killing cats or something. I, I don't okay. know. Okay. I know cats. Cats were probably just fighting. Yeah. I, I think, I think proportionally, it would be more likely that a bunch of cats were fighting at a cave entrance because it's probably safer than out in the open and all that mm-hmm. stuff and whatever. In the inter- original article... The reporter interviewed a sewer worker who believed the tunnel to be created by poor drainage, which is a totally fair assumption. I yeah. I probably, I would bet that that is actually what happened. Because mm-hmm. it's like 1978, so, uh, and the area was like recently slums, so I'm going to assume, yeah, there's probably some really bad drainage situations going on there. Yeah, no, that's a totally believable. <laughs> like, and he's a worker there, like, I'll believe him, he, that's what he does, like, yeah. Yeah. However, not to leave well enough alone, the article quotes another sewer worker. Wow, I cannot pronounce sewer. Uh, who cryptically said, I don't know what he saw down there, but I'll tell you one thing, eh? If we could get in there, I sure as hell wouldn't go down there alone, eh? 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 Because he's Canadian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so... so- Sorry, sorry, but I don't know a eh, if I a eh, a eh, sorry a eh, yeah, yeah. I, I can hear the I I can hear the Canadian in your accent. Yeah. Um. After this, <laughs> the monster is never seen or heard from again. I heard their blood goes great over pancakes. Canadians? Yes. I have had so uh, if you're ever in like the Vancouver area. What the fuck you're about to tell me? I just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> if you're ever in the Vancouver area, you just simply have to just take a Canadian and just cut them open. They bleed maple syrup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, in the Vancouver area, they have uh, blueberries, like really good blueberries, because it's oh, like a temperate okay. climate. Yeah. Um, so I've had, I think I had like a blueberry pancake while I was there, and it was delicious, like really delicious. There's like a a diner that we went to that I really like in um, Victoria Island, but yeah, it, it was actually really funny because when we were there, we took the ferry to get to Victoria Island to get back to to Vancouver, 
and all I could hear was people complaining about how bad the food was on the ferry. Listen, I went to the ferry. We sat on the, we got food there. It was like a buffet style thing. Delicious. Yeah. Absolutely nice. delicious. I have no idea what they were talking about whatsoever. Victoria Island, uh, fun fact, highest amount of uh, cougar attacks. Is that the Victoria? Okay, there's two Victoria Islands. Oh, I didn't know that. So wherever they shoot the show alone, that's the Victoria Island where there's the highest number of cougar attacks. I My think... guess is, is, is that it's the one without the good blueberry pancakes. <laughs> I'm going to assume that too. Uh well, no, it's on Van- it's on Vancouver Island. Oh, Vancouver. Sorry, I, I was wrong. I was incorrect. Uh, I stand corrected. One second. See, the problem is there's Victoria, which is on Vancouver Island. And I thought there was another Vancouver Island, but I could be wrong. No, I guess I guess it it's the same one. Oh, blueberry pancakes and cougar attacks. All right, great. It's really nice there. I would love to live there, but it costs way too much money for, for me, so I'll never live there. Um, so, getting back to the story. Could Ernest have been under the influence? Could it have just been an escaped monkey? Northern chupa thingy? What if it was just a short, hairy, homeless proto DeVito? Because that's what I think <laughs> it was. Um... Honestly, there's, like, literally nothing else on the monster itself. He's like, go away, go away, rum ham, rum ham. He was, he was having a time. He, uh, he emerged from a, uh, uh, a sofa naked. Yes. That's where that, that's how, uh, the tunnel monster of Toronto was born. Emerging from a sofa naked. Because if, so, if it emerged from a sofa with clothes on, that'd be really ridiculous. Yeah, it's how most totally monsters ridiculous. are born, like, to be sofa. honest. Leather yeah. sofas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, there is a popular theory going around on the internet, though. I found okay. it on the Cryptids Wiki. Um, so, the Memaguasi are a race of river-dwelling water spirits from indigenous lore. The creatures are described in Ojibwe lore as being generally benign, approximately child-sized, and hairy with a voice like the whine of a dragonfly. They have been known to mess with canoes or steal from humans when things are not properly respected. Pretty little, pretty standard little people shtick. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's basically, uh, whatchamacallit. Um, it's basically puka. It's basically leprechauns. It's basically red caps. Uh, yeah. the, the Tata Twende. Literally every other little person we talked about on this podcast they're kind of they kind of fit the framework, Pukwudgie, mm-hmm. all that stuff. They're just they're the benign variant of it. Yeah, that's really all it is. Um, in the articles I could find, the Toronto monster, the Toronto Tunnel monster. Uh, <laughs> let me try that again. Okay. In the articles that I could find on the Toronto Tunnel monster, this was a very fairly common theory. The creature itself being like a displaced Memiglossi. Uh, considering the fact that Toronto had been built upon a fairly large number of rivers, this theory is appealing to people who believe in the supernatural, right? Yeah. So, or are willing to accept that the supernatural. Um, in fact, there's so many lost rivers in Toronto that there's a website dedicated to recording the history of the lost waterways. <laughs> yeah. Lost rivers is a joint project between the Toronto green community and the Toronto field naturalists to help discover the fascinating world of the watershed beneath our feet. Um, the site itself is actually really cool. Yeah. Uh, let me, uh, let me send you the link to it. Cause it's in our show notes. Um, I will accept it. Uh, it's a really cool site. Yeah. And I have a link to like the key map, like that shows where everything is. So, um, if you go through this website, there's like a bunch of tours. Ooh. There's a bunch of guides. Yeah. You can click on specific rivers to see information about it. You can click on pound lots, uh, guide self guided tours, all this sort of stuff. And it's really, really cool. Um, it's a like great was... website. It's, it looks the river maps. They're good. I like them. Uh, they remind me of Microsoft paint. Yeah. Well, that's not the only river map. Here's another one. Uh, this one's this is the one that like really sold me on the site though. 
So the Corktown, uh, what is it? Corktown Walk. Uh, it's a really cool oh. thing where there's like a, it's got like a a integration. Dope. Yeah. And there's a historical map overlay that you can apply and yeah. apply and all that stuff. That's cool. Um, really cool thing on this is mm-hmm. it pointed something out where, you know how sometimes in cities you'll see streets that are like really wor- weirdly curved? Yeah. Uh, turns out that's because they're generally following the path of a, like a river oh. or a stream. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the reason it's so weird is because they had to reroute water. Yeah. To make cool. things work. I like that. Which is really cool. Um uh it's number two on the the second map I sent you. Yeah. It's really cool. I, I got kind of like into it for a little bit there. <laughs> um I didn't want to do a whole episode like I didn't want to go into any more for the episode, but it's yeah. out there and if you're interested in it, because this is not a uh podcast about that. By all means. Um, <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> no, and it's, a, totally, it's, it, it's dope. The second map he sent is like... Like actually legit. really yeah. cool. It's really cool. Um, like because it shows where all the rivers are supposed to be and like how they've been lost and all that. Because mm-hmm. you have to remember that this is a, a city that's built on top of a lake, right? Yeah. So there's going there's bound to be a ton a ton of like estuaries and things that drain into the lake that we just, as humans, we've just like made not exist anymore Mm -hmm. because that's what we do. Oh yeah. We're great at breaking stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's still a really fascinating website. Anywho, tangent aside, although this episode is mostly tangent at this point, uh, it seems unlikely that the Toronto tunnel monster is a displaced Memiquasi for two key reasons. First, while the creature was hairy, I can't find any information on red-eyed Memiguasi. Second, the Memiguasi can only be seen by children and medicine people. So unless Ernest was a medicine man, or a man-child, his experience simply does not mesh with the myth. Um, he might have been a man-child. He might have been. Well, our next person's definitely a man-child. We are both man-children. That's all I have to say. We are both man-children. You're not wrong. You're you're not wrong, unfortunately. So I'm gonna send you something, but don't uh, open that yet. Okay. Um. So I'm grasping at the straws at this point to find more information on this topic. That was literally mm-hmm. like everything I could find about the Toronto <laughs> Tunnel Monster. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not joking. Um. But I was reading an article from the Torontoist about the Tunnel Monster, and I came across this name called commander x okay that sounds cool you think so it commander x cool. commander x is the moniker mm-hmm. of christopher doyan a member of anonymous and hacktivist who has a lot to say about use at ufos sounds less cool yeah less almost cool. Inex- yeah almost inexcusably this guy at the time of recording has 67 book credits on amazon many of which have multiple authors and contributors, and most of which have a description written in all caps. So, Mm -hmm. I just sent you a link to his list of of book titles. I'm going to read off a few for you that I found when I was doing research for this episode that are some of my favorites. Continue. (laughs) Plans for time travel machines that really work. Revised and updated edition. Colon. How to move through time and space. Nikola Tesla. Free energy in the white dove. You know, the dove he saw when he was, like, going yeah, yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. Like, right yeah. before he died. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one, that one. Um, <laughs> this is a good one. Reality of the serpent race and the subterranean origin of UFOs. Why? <laughs> this one's Why? really good. Why? Mind control sex slaves in the CIA. Did the CIA turn innocent citizens into mind control sex slaves? That's the full title. <laughs> uh, oh, also, I'd love to have a drink with this guy just for I, one I day. Don't, I honestly don't think you would. Uh, he's a. I, I was looking at his like Twitter, and he's a very. Um, he's the kind of guy who's like free Julian Assange. Okay. Um, and, like, his Twitter's kind of weird. 
Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. I was I was trying to read it and like glean interesting stuff off of it, but he kind of just annoyed me. Uh, okay, that's fair. I mean, that's that's most twitters. Yeah, his his he's at Com- Commander Exanon. His um his banner says vid v day liberty libertad assange okay so it's basically free assange um and he has a lot of this guy yeah. this guy <laughs> he's got a lot of weird stuff fun fact number one all weapons even handgun are banned in outer space by unicord so sorry space force no clue razor laser life rifles wow i can't speak Fun fact number two, military personnel are not allowed aboard the ISS, so unless the Space Force is invited to the Chinese station, you have nowhere to go. Okay, I think that's funny, but he's a little bit of a a character. Because that wasn't all the titles. Because what? That wasn't all the titles that I picked out that were interesting. Uh, Oh, here's one that I didn't write down, but it's related to the Nikola Tesla one. Nikola Tesla, Journey to Mars update. Exposing the existence of the secret space program. And it looks like the picture has a Star Wars spaceship he on He also wrote America's top secret treaty with alien life forms, plus the hidden history of our time. Yeah, it's it's great. There's some really, really terrible names there. The Dolce also- Wars, underground alien bases, and the battle for planet Earth. What? Well, sorry. Sorry. Let me get this right. The Dolce Wars, colon, Underground alien bases and the battle for planet Earth. Second colon. This mm-hmm. is not science fiction. Period. 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 So I guess ellipses. A true, st- a true to life quote. War of the Worlds. Unquote. Yeah. He uses a lot of punctuation. That's the full title. Yeah, that's just the title. I also just found uh, mind control sex slaves of the C in the CIA because there are two versions of the book apparently. <coughs> and. Uh, Commander X was a co-author on this. Uh, the keep in mind this is all in quotes, not not quotes, uh, caps. Unimaginable rape, torture, and bloody rituals. Oh God. <coughs> <coughs> um, leading politicians involved in child abuse rigs, U.S. presidents and vice presidents complicit, use of occult and Satanism as trauma base, anti-Christian night services at Christian churches. <laughs> Plus, exposing the mind-controlled stepboard hordes as well as human sacrifices at the Bohemian Grove retreat. Um, UFO Nazi secret weapons. Okay, here's a really good one. Uh, Morgellons. Wait, wait, sorry, wait. Yeah. UFO Nazi secret weapons book and audio CD. Guess the price. Uh, probably thirty bucks. Higher. Forty. Higher. Fifty. Higher. What are you telling me right now? One thousand and six dollars and ninety cents. What? Used. What? Uh huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Two more from him. Uh, 2012 and the arrival of Planet X. That book is a little bit uh, defunct now. Yes. Um, And the last one, and this is my favorite one, the Commander (laughs) X-Files. Updated. Identifying the real, quotes, Commander X, alien hunter. (laughs) I want to make note of the fact that Oh my god, it really is a thousand. Jesus Christ. Yep. So Levi- uh, Levitation and invisibility. Learn to use the incredible superpowers within you. Oh my god. Yeah. Six dollars. you you'd be you'd be missing out if you didn't, you know, buy that. Like, you're just leaving money on the table. Yeah. Think about all the money you could make by using superpowers in public. Like Man, you wouldn't even have to write books about it. You'd have so yeah. much money. It's kind of like what those people who write uh, how to get rich quick books. Yeah. It's like you almost wouldn't need to do that if your get rich quick scheme wasn't writing a get quick rich book. Yeah. Hmm. It's crazy. Weird. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but one last thing I want to note about that before I move on. Um, Commander X, in the book about him, he is not the only author on that book. There are four authors on the book. Why? I don't know. I don't know why. Why? You'd think why? that he would only... You'd think he would be the only person. Also, he has a lot of updated book titles. Yeah. Why doesn't he just release, like, a second edition? Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but regardless. Um, well, I'm not going to buy the book for this ever, for even for this podcast, because I don't really want to support this level of madness. I did find an article talking about underground alien bases, colon, flying saucers come from inside the Earth, exclamation point, 2012. Okay. And I'm going to hit you with this choice bit right now from the article. I look <clears throat> forward to it. <clears throat> There is a small opening to the underground tunnels off Parliament Street in downtown Toronto. The entrance is between two apartment buildings and leads to the tunnels via the sewers. The underground city, in parentheses, abandoned, question mark, beneath Toronto, has its center beneath Gerard Street and Church Street. Above this area, strange magnetic effects have been observed. In parentheses, note. This corner of Gerard and Church Streets has a higher accident rate than anywhere else in Toronto. It is believed that the underground equipment utilizing powerful magnetic fields, which there's another quote inside of a, uh, there's another parenthesis inside of the first parenthesis, which have caused many strange magnetic effects in houses near this intersection, are responsible for the bizarre equipment failures that are often the, often the cause of these accidents. So that is a two parentheses deep thing right there. Yeah. Uh... So, it's interesting that this theory lines up with Parliament Street, um, and the tunnel sounds suspiciously like the one in Ernest's account, but the theory is complete garbage, because the intersection in question is actually one of the safest in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so, to me, it seems as though Cranor X may have heard about the Toronto Tunnel Monster, and some that somehow wormed his way into his conspiracy thought whether intentional or not. I should also note, uh, Commander X is wanted on, like, the FBI's, like, most wanted list. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I found a picture of him. That's and he's, so good. So I found an of article on Vice about him. Yeah. And um, he basically looks exact. Imagine him first before you click that and then click that. Oh, he's Commander pretty close X. to what you imagine. It's pretty close to what you imagine him is looking for. Commander uh, X, a fugitive homeless hacker, has a new book about hacking on the run. Yeah, that's the that's the behind the mask or whatever book that he wrote. Um, but here's the problem: so a lot of people get like anonymous wrong. I yeah. feel like in the media. Uh, the whole point of being anonymous is there's no trace that it's you. Yeah. So I'm not 100% confident that this guy is actually a member of Anonymous. Because he, like, describes a spider bot that, like, crawls databases and he gives it, like, a name. And I'm just like, are you sure you didn't just watch the movie Hackers? Yeah, I'm scrolling through this, and yeah, he's not. He doesn't seem legit to no. me. No. Um. Anywho, he's not. Well, he, he's cle- Uh. Yeah, he's not. I. I don't think he is. I don't think he is. But... I mean, if you were to show me a picture and be like, "Yeah, this guy's on Chan," I'd be like, "Yeah, totally." I'd be like, "Yeah, he's on 4chan." There's no doubt yeah. in my mind this man is on 4chan. Yeah, he's definitely on 4chan. Um, but. <laughs> 4chan was such a weird thing. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm going to say. Nothing else. Um, so that's pretty much all I got. I've been wanting to do this for a year. <laughs> but I can only find the one story. So I finally just decided to bite the bullet and come up with an episode for it. Um, Fair. So wh- while it's a fun little story, there's literally no meat on the bones of this cryptid in both the literal and figurative sense. A lack of corroborating stories and evidence makes it hard to do research on the critter. And what's more, this week's sources post the original article in almost every single one of them. 
Oh, yeah. It's one of those. Yeah. In fact, most of the articles I found were either upsettingly short or long and covered a ton of sightings of totally different creatures. Mysterious universe. (laughs) At the end of the day, I can speculate until the heat death of the universe, but there's nothing to speculate on. Ernest redacted because we still don't know his last name. Claims he saw something. No one else saw it. The end. That's the Toronto Tunnel Monster. (laughs) Fantastic. It's such a weird cryptid, but it's like, it's one of those, like somebody, uh, the reason I got really interested in doing an episode on this is Mm -hmm. there's like, um, uh, there's like a, a comic online about this monster. Right. And I saw it when I was like looking for stuff back in the day for cryptopedia, like, like early in cryptopedia. Like, I think this has literally been on my lift, my, my list for like a full year. Like that's not even a joke. Um, and this comic, uh, I just sent you Brandon was the reason why I wanted to do it because it was such a well done comic. Um, I don't know who, did this comic j 2014 is the signature so i don't i don't know i'm not gonna post it in the thing or whatever but you can find it if you search toronto tunnel monster comic um it's like a hundred canadian horrors and it's number 86 and i just saw it and i was just like this looks so like so much fun um but there's nothing there no. There's a huge article on the Cryptids Wiki, and I'm just like, there's nothing here. Um, apparently, people are like comparing it to the American Chupacabra, but like, I, why? Why? There's nothing yeah, about why? it. That's there's more Chupacabra. Chupa stuff than there is yeah. this kind of stuff. Although Chupacabra is weird too, because like Chupacabra only came into existence like in the 90s. Yeah. It's a weird story. I'm sure um, there's a whole, like, cultural zeitgeist thing going on that brought that up at that specific time period Yeah, that I don't feel like investigating right now. <laughs> that's fair, because that's an episode. That's, yeah, that's an episode. I'm like, that it's, seems like a lot. To, yeah, like, was, that's a lot of research for a little bit of evidence is what that sounds like. Yeah, I just did a really quick Google, and um, March 1995 is the first instance of the Chupacabra reporting. Yeah. So, goat sucker. Mm-hmm. Anywho. But yeah, no. I thought I'd do a little bit of a shorter one this week because uh, I was getting overwhelmed <laughs> by, 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 by stuff. And Fair. we did a long one last last time. So, here's a little bit of a shorter one. It's not even um, shorter. We're, we're, we broke an hour. We did break an hour. You're not wrong. But by, by, by meat on the bones... It's shorter. <laughs> there's, there's lots of no... bone. We have lots of bone. Not that much meat, but lots of bone. And listen. It, it's a cartilage situation. Yeah. Oh, really. yeah. We're talking shark meat, kind of. Mm. It might it might scrape your throat going down. Just don't Maybe. eat the skin. It might. Don't eat the skin. Do not eat the skin. That's a, that's a rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Um... But yeah, I, I think, I think that's all I got. Um, okay. Right? Is there anything else I want to talk about? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> as always, if you enjoyed the podcast, good for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fucking freak, <laughs> weirdos. No, it, I'm. I'm jo- we're joking. We're joking. You're not that... Well, you are weird. You're but weird. You're, you're weird. You're weird and you should feel bad like. about it. If no, you listen you to this, you should feel bad. You shouldn't feel bad about listening to this You should feel podcast. so bad. You need a therapist. You might need a therapist. That's you fair. You probably need a therapist. I have you a probably, therapist. Yeah, I have a therapist too. Like, like, <laughs> there, is a, there is a chance that you do need a therapist. But that doesn't mean anything's wrong. It's just you need a therapist. It's okay to need a therapist. In fact, this week's episode was brought to you by Talkspace. Talkspace, blah, 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 blah. There's like several. Just go to therapy. Yeah. Yeah. They they also have like, there's group therapy that exists too. Yeah. that's It's cheap. Yeah. I know people that go to the group therapy. Yeah. It's cheaper. 
and it helps with certain uh, problems too, because then you have a support network and all that stuff, but whatever. Um, <laughs> so if you enjoyed the podcast, our website is cryptopediacast.com. On Instagram, we're at cryptopediacast. On Twitter, we're also at cryptopediacast. Um, if you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. We have a Patreon. Let me check it because I forgot to check if we have any different patrons. I don't think we do. I don't. Do we get emails if that happens? I forget. I, we should. We should get emails. I had to reset our password because I forgot oh. it. I, you could have asked me. I have a sticky note. Oh, like, I, I put right a note. Right I, I, I have it. I'll, I'll send you the new one because okay. I forgot the password and it's... It's hard to remember like 30 passwords, okay? Yeah. Um. Oh, Clay has been a, a, a patron for 13 months now. Ooh, all right, he broke a year. What's up, Clay? Clay Sinclair. How about that? He's That's done what's it. up. Yeah. Cool dude, um, too. We played some uh, some Magic the Gathering Arena with him. Yeah, at some point. It's been a little while. Mm -hmm. We got to play video games with, uh, with people again. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Wait, I got to play video games more in general. I mean, I've been playing uh, ESO, but... I still didn't beat Pokemon, but I do want to play ESO. Um, Eric is at work for another three hours, so maybe I'll go to the bathroom, make breakfast, and play some Elder Scrolls. I don't know. I got to film. Oh, and gotta edit. Film. I've got to edit. I got to film Toy Office. You sound so excited. I actually am very excited to film it. I really enjoy filming it. It's just... It's a lot. I believe it. I fully <laughs> believe that. Um... Also, Marty Von Party is still a jackalope, so thanks, yes, Marty. Yes, Marty. Uh, at one of these time, one of these days, I gotta come up with something to give them because I've been wanting to give them something cool that I've had an idea for. Oh, in my brain meets. Well, that sounds cool. I'm um, excited for that. But I also have this bad habit of making myself do too many things at once, mm -hmm. so I don't usually have time to work on the cool brain meat stuff. Okay. Um, it involves pewter. So that's oh, going to be a fun one. Um, yes. Like a lost resin type of like. Something along those lines. Okay. We'll, we'll, <laughs> I'll talk to you about it. I'll talk to you about it uh, because I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. Okay. Fair. Because <laughs> it will probably never happen. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, if you have monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. I still have a few, but I don't know how you're doing on ideas, Brandon. Uh, I've got next week's episode. Well, next two. I've got whatever my next, whenever the next episode comes out. Two I've got that one now. done. I have a couple ideas. I'm probably going to just bang a bunch of them out, but that'll never happen because that never happens. I've been That's meaning to write. I've, I've been meaning to get ahead on writing episodes for Cryptopedia for a year and a half now. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Same. It's about right. Uh, okay, you could follow me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, I'm mu2057 on Instagram and JF Dunham on Twitter. My website is johndunhamgames.com. My email is john at cryptopediacast.com. And as we were talking about at the beginning of the episode, I have a YouTube channel called yes. Toy Office now. Uh, I'm literally going to be recording an episode as soon as I'm done with this episode. So hopefully that'll be up uh, in the past for you if you're listening to this podcast. Yeah. Do you but like that on your uh, website? It's on my website and it's on the it's on okay. Wikipedia's website. All right. I also added to the sh I've been adding it to the show notes. I'll probably stop doing it eventually. But okay. I'll just be adding it to the I mean, show if notes not, go bit. to https colon forward yeah. slash forward slash www.youtube.com slash channel slash capital U, capital C, capital D, lowercase w, lowercase l, lowercase j, capital V, capital O, lowercase k, the number eight, capital A, lowercase q, capital O, uh, capital I, capital M, capital I, capital Q, lowercase y, lowercase m, the number two, lowercase c, capital L, uh, l lowercase l and or capital I yep. W again. If you need to, I'm, that's a joke. There's no. It's again. a. It's a really. It's a really easy way to reach it. You're yeah. not wrong. It's. It's just listen to him. It's just 
U C D W L J V O K A A Q O I M I Q Y M two L C. I got that wrong, but anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't I can't change the name of the channel until I have like a thousand subscribers. Yeah, it's I know. Really ridiculous. They that changed used to the... not be the case. My old email, yeah. you could do that all the time with my old. Just make it say whatever you want it to say. Yeah, and yeah. now not so much. And I'm not giving out my old email. That's fair. Honestly, I don't want anyone to see... Like, I took all my old videos down from high school. Um, Fair. Because, like, all my old videos from high school were... uh, They were mostly um, AMVs Mm -hmm. uh, involving Christian rock music. So, how about that? (laughs) There was also a period where I was making... um, Yeah, most of my videos have copyright claims against them. Fair. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> um. Oh. Also, a... John at CryptoPDCast.com. Um, our art yeah. was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. Oh, God. I did a house video. What is wrong with me? I forgot I did that. <laughs> oh no. This is awful. This is terrible. You can't see it, but it's terrible. <laughs> oh god. All right, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird and I'm super embarrassed by high school John. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I think we're all embarrassed about high school, everybody. Yeah, that's fair. Bye. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) We've never just said bye before. What? I say bye on... I say bye on Toy Office. It's like my thing. I do. Yeah. I don't know. I I also say it's okay to bring a toy to work. That's the other thing I do. It is. I have a bobblehead of myself at work. You do? I Mm -hmm. think I've seen the bobblehead of yourself. Probably. There's several. I've got one in my yeah. basement, too. I, th- I think I've seen that one. Yeah. I have I have a Machine Wars Optimus Prime on my desk because I own two of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a $50 toy. Oh, God. I think. I'm, I'm looking it up. I should probably stop recording. Amazon has it. No, it doesn't. All right, I should stop recording. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> and...